Okay, so Lucy's just shown you that when we looked to the reviews that had followed our guidance, there was a mix of different approaches being used and it was clear that our guidance needed some clarity. So we went back as a group, like Heather said, and we've been discussing this on and off for, I think, a year. So we're going to go through what we've proposed now, but the complete caveat is this is not official JBI guidance. We have not submitted it to the scientific committee yet. We actually want feedback from you. Please be nice. I'm looking at you, Zach Munn, with a big smile on his face. Um, so yes, we are looking for some feedback, but I guess the way that we've framed this guidance and we felt we needed to frame it was to talk about data extraction and talk about data integration separately. So they are two different steps in the process. So if you are conducting a JBI mixed methods convergent integrated review and you're up to extraction and you're extracting quantitative data, whether that be from quantitative studies or primary mixed me method studies, where possible, we are encouraging or recommending authors that they should stay as close as possible to the data reported in the primary studies. So where you've got the numeric results that have a narrative representation, we are hoping, or we are wanting reviewers to extract that information verbatim. So if we look back to Lucy's tables, that's that first example, verbatim extraction. We understand that, dependent on the needs of your review, this is not always going to meet the needs of your review, so there might be insufficient information. So in that particular scenario, we would want reviewers to extract the verbatim data, but then supplement it with the information you need. So if we go back to Lucy's table, there was that example with the time parameter. So it will depend on your review. It might be different types of contextual information, comparator information, information related to statistical significance. But I guess the highlight here is we're not wanting reviewers to develop fresh narratives. They're using the data from the primary studies and then they're supplementing if they need. Now, we also had a bit of a discussion about this because there is going to be situations where there actually is no narrative provided in the primary studies. So if you think about these types of systematic reviews, often they're asking questions of barriers and enablers or factors or determinants, and they measure a lot of factors and determinants. It may be that they actually only report in the narrative those that are statistically significant, but you've got all of these factors listed in tables and figures, but there's no narrative. So in those circumstances, we are recommending that reviewers will obviously have to create their own narrative, but we would want them to base it on the style and format of the key data that was described in the primary studies. So we've got three approaches here. We've got that verbatim extraction, verbatim extraction with some supplementation, but from the primary study, or when there's no narrative, we're developing, the reviewers are developing it, but they're basing it on the style and the format of those primary studies. So when we're thinking about planning our review and conducting our review, we need to start thinking about, well, what approach are we going to take? Now, essentially, you aren't going to know what approach you're going to take until you come up to the extraction stage. So it may be that in one study you can do complete extractions verbatim, but there might be other studies where you have to do a mixture. So in terms of your planning and your reporting within your review, we are suggesting that in the protocol you would outline all of those three approaches, what you might do, but when you actually get up to your review, you would actually comment on what approaches you use. So you outline all the approaches in your protocol, but the ones you actually used, you would put in your review, noting that it's expect, you know, we expect that it will be variable across included studies. Now, in terms of extraction, we also want to consider the following, which 
Again, when we were looking at our reviews, we didn't always see this data within the reviews themselves. So what data will be extracted? So if we're talking about reviews of factors, what constitutes a factor? What constitutes a barrier or a facilitator? We want to see that detailed in the protocol. As I've just gone through, we'd like to see or outline what approaches will be planned to use to extract and what were actually used. And then we need to consider this issue of cutoffs. So some reviewers like to use cutoffs. I guess the most popular one that we saw is that they'll only include factors that were found to be statistically significant. So if you are, as a reviewer, planning to conduct or to include a cutoff, we would want to see that documented in the protocol and as well as that, a rationale for doing so. If you are to use a cutoff, it may be that you include primary studies, but there's data from that primary study that won't actually go out to be included in your results. So we would like the authors or reviewers to consider some discussion on that about excluding potential results from the review. And then also on that, if we do have a cutoff, it may impact or it will impact the results of the review. So we, we're encouraging reviewers to have some discussion about that in their review, perhaps as a limitation as well. So I think looking around the room, I don't have to go into these uh, points in too much detail, but I guess we just want to highlight that when we're talking about data extraction, and I guess particularly for mixed methods, or no, for all types of reviews, but the importance of cross-checking your data. So we've all seen examples of primary studies or systematic reviews where in the data, the data in the figures and tables don't actually match the narrative within the actual paper. So we need to think about mechanisms to ensure and cross-check that the, the numerical data does um, align with the narrative. We obviously want experienced reviewers to be helping out within the systematic review and data extraction, and I guess in this particular circumstance, we want people with quantitative uh, research backgrounds. We strongly recommend piloting using a standardised form, um, so we're ensuring that all extraction happens or uh, we're all doing the same thing. And like international consensus, we want extraction to be taken in duplicate and independent. Now, when we're talking about piloting, we want to use a standardised data extraction form. And if you currently look in our chapter, we do have an extraction form, but based on the work that we've been doing, we have updated it. And it comes from this work and also a, a bit of a piece of work we did last year, I think it was, where we looked at other examples of reviews that had followed our guidance. And there was this lack of transparency in terms of what was extracted from the primary studies, what was fresh narratives. So with this revised extraction form, it is clear per study what data was extracted verbatim, what had modifications, and what was fresh narrative. <coughs> 